What's up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm Tim with Outcast and today we're jumping back into the Blazer build. We're going to get you guys caught up on where we are from the last video as you've seen us putting the body back on the chassis. And today we are actually going to start the process of completing the motor. That'll be the intake, that'll be the fuel injectors, fuel rails, completing the fuel line system, and hooking up all the electrical for the sending unit and uh, etc. So we'll get you guys over into the shop with us. We'll display all of our stuff that we're going to be trying to install today and get started on. And then we'll get started on it and see how far we can get. Thanks, guys. Let's get out there. Okay, what's up, guys? So we're out in the shop. You can see we've got the blazer here. And uh, so far, we still need to install the intake on the LS motor. Now, this is the 6.0. I believe it came out of a 2000 uh, Silverado 2500 um, or maybe a Suburban or something like that. But nonetheless, it's been fully rebuilt. It's got heads and cam. Um, it's got new uh, connecting rods, all new lifters, push rod. Everything's brand new. Uh, we went over a lot of that in the first video when we introduced the truck. Uh, we got a badass uh, blacked out serpentine kit on this. And uh, we got some polished headers here. Those still need to be torqued down. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is installing our Holly Sniper uh, EFI intake, fuel rails, fuel injectors, uh, throttle body, stuff like that. And uh, one of the things we'll need to do first is install our cam sensor. Now we just got this cam sensor in. Let me grab it here on the table. We just got this cam sensor in. Uh, a little hard to get. I don't know if it's a hot item. I don't know if they've just struggled to make more i don't really know what the case is i'll pull it out of the box here you can see it's a pretty big sensor too it's a big boy uh if you guys work on these you've seen them a million times probably not a big deal it's held down by a little 10 millimeter bolt that goes down into the slot here at the uh, back of the engine now i've got mine mass taped off so that nothing could get down in there let me peel that back the only bad thing I've noticed about using the masking tape along the way is it's like if it's had to set on there for quite some time, it really leaves like a sticky residue. Or you know what? Maybe I just got some cheap tape. I don't know. Hold on. We got... Yeah, we live here in an airport, so we get a lot of action, a lot of helicopters, little biplanes full-blown UPS 747s fly by all day long right here guys so bear with us but uh, that's still throttle cable that's another kit we're looking into right now is getting the proper throttle cable set up for this but what we're going to do is we're going to take this cam sensor and we're going to put a little assembly loop here on this lower o-ring that lower blue o-ring right there We'll put a little assembly lube on that. We'll work this down in and then we'll hit it with the 10 millimeter bolt and it should be locked in. And that's kind of where we'll start our rear harness. And one of the things we need to make sure we get in and connected before we get too much stuff piled up here and we can't even get to it. But as long as this goes in, we should be good to go ahead and install the intake. Again, I don't know if you can see from there, I'm going to be bringing you guys over, but this yellow sheen that you're seeing in the camera is actually all masking tape. Uh, covering up our cathedral port and as I peel this back it's not too bad but yeah it leaves a pretty uh, like gluey residue and we'll have to make sure we go around probably with like acetone or something and get all that off so we can get a nice seal on our intake I'm excited about it this is fun man this has been a minute coming so let's get right into it I'm going to grab the 10 millimeter bolt I need for this We'll get some assembly lube and we'll put you guys up here with me and we'll throw this thing in, tighten it down, and then we'll move to the next step. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> we went ahead and grabbed our uh, new bolt here. We went and bought a new bolt for this. Now, if you save all the bolts off of the engine when you get it, say you're going to take it to the machine shop or whatever it is, if you buy the engine complete, what I recommend doing is, I mean, even if you don't go as far as labeling every single bolt and doing all that, because they're going to be dirty and nasty, and you're probably going to want to just tear your uh, engine apart and get going. But like, for example, 
exhaust bolts will probably be no good. You'll want to replace those. If you're putting new heads on, I recommend you're going to go with all new uh, head bolts and stuff like that. And the reason we ended up with so many leftovers because we actually put a lot of ARP fasteners on everything. But with this particular sensor, this is just an M8 1.25 by 20. So it's a pretty standard, uh, standard metric bolt. Um, but there should be, you know, just around your, your shop from taking this apart, you'll probably have these that you're going to replace. So if you don't want to go buy them, don't go buy them. Re, you know, reuse what you got. Now, this bolt right here only cost me, uh, actually, I'll tell you exactly right now what this one bolt cost me. I got five of them, and they were $0.59 cents each, so it came out to $2.95 before tax. Um, so when I went online to look at this bolt because I was like, well, let me just order this online. I'll have one shipped with some of the other parts like this sensor that was coming in and we'll get a new bolt with it. They want five dollars. Five bucks for this one bolt. I'm not going to turn over a cost like that to my clients or my customers and I'm not personally going to pay five dollars for a bolt. So I'm not going to make them pay five dollars for a bolt just because it's convenient. When I can run down to the hard, hardware store, I pick up a few other things while I'm there anyways. And uh, the, why did I buy five? Because every time I buy bolts, I buy multiple. So when you go to look for a bolt, let's say you were doing a different sensor or something on the engine, it's probably going to have this same M8. It might have a different size uh, hex head on it. This is a 15 mil. I think the original one was like a 10 millimeter. Um, but again, it'll fit different things and we don't want to spend so much on hardware but with it only being like five bucks for these bolts dude out the door would have or five bucks no five bucks would have got us 10 of them you can't go wrong so let's get back into it i'm going to take the uh, assembly lube that i have here that i used when i uh, assembled the engine on like the cam and everything. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that assembly uh, lube around this lube gasket here. O-ring, I should say, not a gasket. We'll lube that up and we will work this down into the back of the engine. It might take a little finagling, but it should pop down in there pretty easily. I'll actually bring you guys over so I uh, can get you up close when I do put it in. So let me rub a little bit of this on there. Make sure the surface is clean where it's going to sit, and uh, we'll we'll throw it in there. Yeah, looks like it's going to go no problem, guys. Right on. I went ahead and put a real nice uh, bead of some of that assembly lube there on the blue O-ring. Didn't overdo it, but, you know, put enough on there to where it'll just kind of help keep it from overheating or you know drying out right away and going bad on us so now i'm hoping you guys can see I know this line might be in the way a little bit but we're just going to drop it basically down in with the bolt hole in the flange facing basically where it's going to mount press down boom it just dropped in <clears throat> excuse me make sure it's seated all the way I'm going to take our new bolt we just bought, and I can actually go ahead and put a lock ring or something on here if, if you think it, you know, or a little bit of Loctite, if you think it's necessarily me, I'm just going to put it in and uh, bring it down nice and snug. It doesn't really, you know, where it's located, nothing's really going to be pulling on it, or and I don't think it's going to catch enough vibration or anything to work it loose. I'll tighten it up with the wrench here <clears throat> just kind of snug that bad boy up i guarantee you that's already a little tighter than the torque uh spec recommendation so that'll help us out there um you don't want to over torque it because you're just holding down a sensor and there's really no reason to over torque it so there you guys go there 
And now as you look into the valley of this engine, you can see that I have to remove this tape. And I don't know if you can see that, but it leaves just a little bit of residue. You know, if I kind of pull it slower, it's not as bad. But I don't know if you can see the residue it's leaving here. So I don't want any of this on the surface of the heads when I'm going to go to put my intake on. So I purchased some uh, goop off. Oops, sorry about that. I purchased some uh, action here. And we're just going to put a little bit on a rag and go around real slow and just kind of work that out. Then we'll take a, a rag with like some acetone and microfiber and just clean it all up, make sure it's dry. And then we'll kind of prep and put that on. One thing here is, guys, is this is a steam port line. Um, and the factory one will actually have all four corners connected where our rear ones we're actually going to uh, let me see if I have them here on the table I can grab them for you and show you uh, let's see okay here they are here these are the rear steam port block off plates and this focus or not but you can see they look just like the other ones there's just no other holes in them besides the bolt hole so that'll go into the rear. The thing is, I have enough of an angle here um, on my drivetrain to where the highest point of my heads are clearly the front of the heads. And then this little port right here, this connector, will go to the radiator. So that'll be like the overflow, or if it builds too much pressure, it can send it back to the radiator. Um, but that will allow the heads to properly cool without building too much pressure in the heads or uh, having air trapped in there. So that just lets it lets them breathe properly and allows the coolant to do what it's supposed to do. So we went ahead and we installed those uh, right after we had put the motor in. So I didn't show you that. Super simple. The little black O-ring will go inside of the... Uh, the side here with the little nipple, it slides over that. You don't even really have to put nothing on them. A little bit of motor oil if you really want to, but then there you go. Throw the bolt in there and tighten it down, and that'll block off the rear ones. Um, and that'll take care of it so you don't have to run those steam port lines underneath the intake and all that. If you want to, you can. They sell some badass kits where there's like a, a connecting block in the middle, and it goes each way, and it does all that. For me, I'm just not going to run that. Um, but man, isn't the engine looking pretty good, guys? The spark plugs are on their way. They should be coming. We got the damper pulley on. We did graded bolts on it. Um, we're waiting on the thermostat housing. We were a little, a little bummed out to find out that the kit we ordered didn't have the thermostat housing. You know, I could see if it maybe didn't come with the thermostat itself in case you want to run a special application for like a, a different temperature range but at least come with the housing so i was a little i was a little set back by that because it even shows it in their uh in their on the front of their cover sheet it shows it on there but it doesn't list it anywhere in their parts list so it's kind of like all right now we got to go track down a hundred and some dollars worth of thermostat and thermostat housing so that's a little bit frustrating but let me get you guys set back up here because the next thing we're going to be doing is uh i believe breaking out our our new intake and getting that set up okay you guys are still there okay um so the next step guys is to go around and peel this tape off, use our goop off remover. All you gotta do is put a little bit on a rag. You don't wanna go spraying it up in here and, and getting nothing crazy. If you've made it this far on your engine, I'm sure you're smarter than that. Uh, if you haven't, then just don't go spraying it down inside the heads. You don't wanna get any liquid or dust or anything down inside these uh, ports in the heads, period. So I'm not going to bore you guys with having you guys watch me clean these. Um, so once I have them clean, we'll bring the intake out. We'll scan through the instructions to make sure we got the torque spec and, and everything down for that. 
Maybe we can get that uh, Holly Sniper intake installed today. That would be great. I was going to do it in a separate video, but we're already kind of rolling. And then another thing I would like to jump over to at some point is our brake uh, booster kit with the master cylinder booster. And I want to show you where we ran into some issues with the manufacturer on that over a literally a, a 50 cent plastic cart turned into this big old shipping nightmare and having to call and then they sent us the wrong one so we'll get into all of that um but for now let's jump over into the intake so let me get these heads cleaned up and we'll be back guys thanks really quick i want to bring you guys in here and show you look at the way this tape has stuck on his head and these are polished uh head or faces here so i'm gonna have to go in Got to make sure I don't get nothing down in these portholes, so I'll have to stuff them full of rags. Go around with the goop off and start cleaning it off. This side was a lot worse for some reason. This side's just got a little bit of glue residue, but not a whole lot of tape. But nonetheless, stuff you got to deal with. You know, it was better than getting a bunch of stuff in there. That was the tape I had at the time. Apparently, it's terrible. So I'm going to probably have to deal with that everywhere I peel that off now, but that's all right. It's a learning curve here, guys. Just wanted to show you that real quick. Let me get it cleaned up, and we'll get the intake out here. Okay, guys, it's a little while later now. Um, it took me quite a bit to get that cleaned off of there, but that's pretty much what it looks like now. Obviously, it looks a whole hell of a lot better. Um, I'll be honest, I think that's a little bit of a, a no-go on the masking tape next time. I don't think I'll be doing that. Um, it got put on there quite a, some time ago, a few months ago, we put it on there, you know, because we were still got to put the engine in the drivetrain and build all the rear cross members and everything. And in doing so, the tape just sat, you know, in the summer months, it gets warm out here. It gets warm inside the garage. So the tape just gets sticky. So long story short, the goof off worked. Um, we can go ahead and set the manifold up here, uh, intake manifold up here, but I can tell you right now, one thing we do need to do before we install that is we need to hook up all of our vacuum lines uh, that are gonna run off of the bottom. So we have one that's gonna run to the breather here on this uh, driver's side valve cover, and then obviously the one that's gonna run to the brake booster. Now, the Holley EFI Sniper intake did come with fittings, but they're the straight fittings. And what happens is they sh they point straight down at the intake valley. So in order to get a nice sweep underneath there, I'm actually gonna wanna go with 90 degree fittings. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to screw all 90 degree fittings on there, because otherwise they'll hit each other, but at least be able to get two on there because I really only need to hook up the brake booster and the valve cover here, and I can plug the other two ports. Um, Let's see, in addition to that, we could go ahead and install the uh, brake booster here, but then in the same token, I don't really wanna have the big brake booster here yet because I still need to be able to access the back of the engine when we run our new fuel lines. Um, so really at this point, it looks like I'm gonna run down, pick up a few fittings, but uh, while I was here working on the gunk off removal action we went ahead and got a knock at the door and we got one of our michigan motorsports packages so let's go ahead and pop this thing open and see what they got us or uh what came in today because we've got a bunch of stuff ordered that we've been waiting on so let me grab a razor knife here we'll cut this bad boy open and see what we got let me try and bring you guys down a little closer there we go i think you can see right there Cut this open nice and easy. Don't be trying to get my address off here, dude. I don't got nothing you want, bud. Mm, there we go. Start hitting the weights. That packaging's pretty tough. All right. Okay, guys. So look at we got our NGK plugs came in. Now apparently these are uh, upside down. So there you go. Apparently these are pre-gap, but obviously we'll check them. NGK power. Let's pop these open and see what we got. TR6 GP, stock number 5141. Oh, these are nice. 
So this is what we're gonna go with right here, guys, the TR6s. Nice TR6 plug. We, so we got all eight of those came in today, that's great. And then we had went with some uh, plug wires originally that I wasn't real happy with. They said, oh, for truck application, but I'm like, I'm assuming that's like in a stock application where maybe the wires needed to be longer because uh, we had to order this set right here, this bad boy. This is an eight millimeter set by Michigan Motorsports made in the USA. That's freaking badass. They say LS truck red. So 10 millimeter, what's the length on these? I believe these were the 10 inch. Uh, tens, maybe even the eights, but the ones I have, I don't know, they're like 14. They're so long, they leave a giant loop here from the, uh, the coil pack down to where the plug goes. It's like this big old bunny ear and it didn't look right. So I'm hoping that these will work. So what we could do is let's go ahead and pop open the spark plugs since I already got you guys here. Uh, let's throw one in the truck, you know, even if it's just a mock-up so we can kind of see what these new plug wires look like. And I'll grab the old plug wire and we'll do a comparison. So let me pop this bad boy open here. Bam, TR6, NGK. Luckily that tape wasn't stuck in there too bad. Um, fish this bad boy right up in here. These RHS aluminum heads, obviously we haven't ran them yet, but man, they are, they seem really, really nice. I mean, the packaging, we got those through Summit and um, they're the Cathedral Port heads, um, all aluminum. They came fully loaded, ready to rock and roll. I, I really recommend you guys check them out. And obviously once we get this running, we're gonna, you know, see how they perform and go from there. So let's, let's check these bad boys out. Go down here on the plug first. Yeah, baby. There we go. Wowie, wowie. I don't know, what do you guys think? Now this is a really a thick, thick spark plug wire. It almost feels like it has a, a, an aftermarket heat type coating on it, which I'm sure it does. I didn't really read too much about it. Uh, maybe I can angle that a little bit. See, give that a little bit different angle. Um, shoot, I'm almost thinking they could have been even shorter. But I don't know if that would have put more of a bend in it because uh, let me grab the other one and I'll show you a comparison real quick. Um, at least these, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that gonna be, is that gonna work? They're badass plug wires though. So I don't know, we'll have to take a look. I'm not really liking the way that looks. If I'm being 100% honest, I might have to do either like a straight boot um, I'm not sure. Maybe that's something I need to look into a little further, but nonetheless, if I have to run them, we'll run them. They look good. Let me grab the other one. I'll show you how long they were. They're like extremely long. Give me a sec. Here's this one. See the difference? And yeah, guys, this is just like a coating on here is all that is. It's like a heat shrink. Um, but like if I stick this, let me throw another spark plug in here and I'll show you the other uh, wire, show you the difference in length. And it has a different end on it. So maybe the straight end is better than the curved end. Let's see. Trying to get this, you know, started by hand. Okay. Let's 
see the difference on this. I mean, I can't even, I can't even get these in past the header. Yeah, that would have never even worked, guys. You know what I'm saying? And these aren't reversible. I'm going to do that. Let's see if our new Michigan Motorsports uh, plug wire. Michigan Motorsports plug wire. If we can get that to. There it goes. Just snapped on. Yeah, I'm thinking we might need to get shorter ones, guys. Because that's going to stay. That's going to stay rubbing right on the header. that so they don't necessarily look bad but i don't want it sitting on that header the whole time and maybe start to melt so we might have to figure something out here and either go with the shorter ones or i'll buy those little protective sleeves that go over here for the heat you know those uh old school ones they still they still run them on cars. I didn't really want to put those on here, but that might be the hot ticket. I mean, that wouldn't look bad as long as they don't melt, you know, because there's really nothing else that needs to go in there. But nonetheless, we'll get it figured out and uh, we'll get the rest of those thrown in. That's probably gonna wrap up this video, guys, for right now. I need to run down and get the fittings for the intake so we can continue that. Let me bring you guys up a little bit. Get those fittings for the intake and then that way we can install the intake and the brake booster and hook up all those airlines at the same time. Then we'll run the fuel lines up and we'll drop in our uh, fuel rails and injectors and, and finally hook up the fuel system. And then uh, we'll put the rest of our spark plugs and wires in and on. And um, I'll look into on the internet tonight about just getting some of those protective uh, covers for the wires here. And that should be fine. I think that'll resolve the issue. But for now, I'm going to run. We'll be back. And when I'm back, I'll get you guys in here and we'll keep going. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, check it out. We've got our uh, socket set up here. And this is just a spark plug wrench that fits the spark plug. If you've never seen one of these before, it's your basic socket and they make them for all size spark plugs and it has a little rubber o-ring down in there and what that does is that'll pinch the top of the spark plug and it'll actually hold it in the socket for you so when you throw it in there see it like locks in then what i like to do is i'll just get an extension throw that all together and see the spark plug can't fall out now and then that way when you go to install it here in the last spark plug hole or whatever one you're working on it kind of grips it for you and it allows you to get it in there and get it started straight and you'll know if it's going especially if you've got brand new heads or whatever on your ride because they're they won't fight you at all we're going to get that all the way in there and we're just going to go to hand tight and then uh using our socket wrench you really only need to go about a half a turn from there from hand tight to two-thirds of a turn and that's pretty much going to seat it so if you watch the wrench and we go about boom boom that's all i'm going to do that's not even you know that's like maybe a third and it got tight and we're not going to force it that's all it needs to be now on these other ones that are a lot more difficult if you see i can't really get my socket in there because it hits the header pipe now, at this point, I only have the short tube headers on there, so theoretically, I could pull those off and just do the spark plugs real quick. But if he's going to be bringing me the vehicle to maintenance and stuff, I should might as well just get used to uh, doing it with the headers on. So all I'll do is, since I went ahead and started those spark plugs by hand, is I'll get this same size socket, which this one happens to be a 5.8 socket, and I'll see if I can take the extension off and put a swivel on there and get down in there with the swivel. If that doesn't work, then we're going to have to uh, see what our next option will be. But I'm thinking with the swivel, we might be able to get it. Let me grab one here.
What's a swivel? A swivel is basically like a, a joint that you can add to your socket, which allows you hopefully to get the uh, wrench in there. Now, if I feed the socket down in here first, I notice I can get it on to the spark plug right there. And I don't know if it's going to be too much of an angle or not to get the socket on there. You can kind of see that. So let me get the socket or the extension. I'm sorry. See if it's even going to go on. And there we go. I was able to get, I was able to get enough out of it to where it's tight. But see, here's the problem is now our, our swivel is wanting to kind of get stuck up in here. So, this is an issue that we're going to have to deal with in the future when uh, we ever have to change spark plugs on this. So what I'll probably end up doing is maybe coming up with another socket. They have a hollow socket, which allows you to get this on there. And then I might be able to get a box wrench on this end or use a hollow socket where it, it allows the nut or I mean the bolt to come out through the end of the socket. And then you can get something on it. So let me try and work on getting this back off of there now, or I might just have to uh, loosen it and take it off. I'm not sure. Okay, we got this swivel off, guys. It, that thing was on there like a nightmare. Um, it actually got jammed down in there uh, so much so it sweated me out. I had to change my hat. But I ended up just... Working on it, working on it, working on it, wiggling it till I finally got that out. Now that I have the socket still on there, I believe it's a 19 millimeter. I, I don't know why. I think I said earlier it was a 15 or or not socket, but it's a 5.8. Uh, but this 19 mil fits it perfectly. So if you look here, the wrench will just fit on the end of that spark plug wrench. And I'm able to tighten it enough. The thing is, let me set this back down. The thing is, guys, is with, with spark plugs and headers like this, once the vehicle's all built out and you have the brake booster here and then you're going to have the uh, steering column coming down and doing what it's doing and, you know, you're going to have the fender well in here and a lot of other stuff, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get in here. So I realize that this is a pretty easy way to show you how to do it because I don't have anything in, else in my way. But using that swivel was not the hot ticket so actually if i drop this one in right here on this next one let's see if i can get you guys in here while i tighten that it's kind of hard to do it one-handed but we'll work with it see if you can see in here i'm literally gonna put the 16 point on there you go a little turn there Make sure the socket's staying on. Now you might, when you go to do them, you might even have to remove this coil pack because this part here that sticks out where the plug wire goes is so long. If that wasn't there, I could actually get on this pretty good. Um, but let's see if we can just get a little bit more out of it. Okay. So you guys get the idea. I'm going to set the camera down so I can use two hands. I'm going to sneak my hand underneath right here and kind of just put pressure up on the socket so that I'm not pulling the socket and we're keeping it nice and circular. Move the wrench. You might only get that little bit of half a turn at a time. Just keep going until you get them tight. And like I said, if you have to remove that coil, remove it because, you know, two little eight millimeter bolts and it's out of your way might be the hot ticket, but for... For this right now, this will work. Flip it around. See if I can get a little bit different angle on there. All right, that feels pretty good. Just want to make sure we're not... Might even be able to sneak in underneath. Here we go. All right, that feels pretty tight right there, guys. We're not going to push it. Oh, man. Almost thought we had our box wrench stuck. All right, we'll pull that off. Come down here to the end. Get that one in there hand tight. Now we can bring our socket wrench back. And it looks like 
be able to just tighten that up with the socket wrench, no problem. That's pretty much tight. We'll go right there. That's it. That's all the more we're going to tighten that up. Double check. Make sure this back one. Yep. Okay, so now those are all tight. We're going to throw these plug wires on. We're thinking even though they do look a little long, we're going to run them. Let me grab these. Um, if for later on down the line we want to change them out, then we will, but I'm going to run them for right now. I did go ahead and uh, get us some of those heat shrink covers. They're coming, so when those come in, I'll just throw them on. But uh, These actually have a little bit of dielectric grease in there, which is nice. Got to kind of work them down in there till you feel it click. Obviously, the long portion of the spark plug wire goes over the plug. And then this is your coil side. But you can't, you can't put them on the other way, so you're not going to mess up. I'll set those down. There it goes. Want to hear that little snap so you know it clicked in. This one, there it goes. Pop that in there. There they go. So there you go, guys. There's the plugs and wires on the driver's side here. The passenger side should be pretty much exactly the same. We can come over here real quick and take a look. Yeah, it's not too much more difficult. Obviously, we have the AC uh, here, so we might have to just go with the shorter extension back there. But I can definitely get my wrench in there. And then we'll go ahead now and we'll torque down our header bolts once we get the spark plugs and wires in on this side. I'll torque the headers down just in case I have to pull them off like on that side where we had our uh, swivel stuck. It came close to having to pull that off, guys. So... Um, check that out. That looks pretty good. Um, I was able to run down to the hardware store and get us those uh, fittings for the intake. So I do have those. I need to fit those up. So let me grab the intake and I'll bring it over and uh, we'll see if those fittings are going to work. And then we'll probably wrap this video up and go into another video following right behind this, which installs the intake and all of that so that we don't drag this video out too long. So let me go grab that stuff, guys. We'll wrap up. Hit subscribe, comment, like, and um, we'll see you shortly in the next video following right behind. Thanks.